Hello everyone, Scott Cody, West Ham Fan TV. Back again with your big match preview, back for the season by Labrooks. New customers sign up using promo code West Ham Fan will receive £20 worth of free bets with your first £5 bet. Terms, conditions, and details are all over at labrooks.com. Straight in with the football, West Ham Swansea, 3 o'clock kickoff at the London Stadium on Saturday. A must win game. I know we've said that a few times this season, but we're back in that bottom three. This is a great time to push on and get ourselves out of it. You know, disappointing result against Tottenham. As we said in post-match pints, started well, changed the system, things didn't go too good. So, you know, let's hope we can push on and put this one right. Swansea not having a great start to the season. They're one point in front of us with five points. Their only winner so far this season in the league was a 2-0 victory away to Palace. I do believe that all their points have come away from home. So they're going to be a very, very tough side to break down. You know, they've got a good 0-0 draw at Tottenham. You know, I know Spurs haven't been playing too well at Wembley, but still, Swansea went there, held out, got a 0-0 draw. So, as I said, they're going to be tough. I think the only side that's actually turned them over decently this season is a 4-0 uh, defeat to Manchester United, which, again, like us, we lost to Man United, and I think Man United are going to do that with a few sides this season. So, you know... They're going to be well organised. They're going to be up for it. They're going to look at this as a winnable game for them as well. You know, two sides that are, are, are both fighting against relegation at the moment. Um, the boost for our part, in my mind, is the stats against Swansea. We have only lost two of our last ten against them. Beat them twice last season. 4-1 at their stadium and a 1-0 victory at the London Stadium. So, you know, confidence for us. Plus Andy Carroll, six goals in nine games. Um which is a great stat for him. You know, he's, he's probably one of the most teams he's played against now in his injury record, so it's good leading into that. Squad-wise, obviously, Ginger Collins and Obiang will both be missing for this one. Fernandez, I think, has got to fit this test, but a big, big boost is Lanzini and Antonio are both back in the squad. Antonio broke down, went off again after 20 minutes against Tottenham. Um, Lanzini's obviously only made one appearance this season, so massive boost to have them two back. Will they both start? You know, I think Billich probably damned if he do and damned if he don't. If he starts them and they both break down injury-wise, people are going to be going, oh, why do you start them? But if we don't win and he doesn't start them or they don't feature, again, people are going to be asking questions. So it's really, really tough. For me, his job's on the line. He's got to go for it. You know, it is a must-win game. I know it's still early in the season, but still, win this one takes us out of the bottom three. That's how we've got to look at it. So it's a very, again, in that international break, another week off for the players who don't go away with their uh, countries. It is a must-win. It really is. You know, if we can get out of that bottom three, again, in this break, bit of confidence. You know, you can put that um, loss to Tottenham aside. You know, and it's good then moving forward. You know, for me personally... I would risk them. I said we need to get out of this bottom, this bottom three, especially going into this international break. Um, Tottenham will be Tottenham, sorry. Swansea will be without Dyer and uh, Bartley. They're both missing from this one. Um, players to keep an eye on for me: Swansea, Tammy Abraham's very, very good young striker on loan from Chelsea. Yeah, you know, he's got a couple of goals this season. I do believe in the league and the cup. You know, don't I don't know much about Swansea, but you know, he's he's a type of young player that I would have liked to see West Ham gone in for. And I say that with a few players that we come up against, but you know, he's he's quite an exciting striker. Um, a couple of my mates at work who support Chelsea, you know, they rave about him and keep asking questions why he keeps going out on loan. You know, he's the type of player that they want to see inside. So he's very good, very highly rated. Um, so he's going to be one to keep an eye on. Obviously, it's going to be a battle of the IU brothers. Um, Jordan IU playing for Swansea and Andre IU obviously playing for us. So that would be an interesting if they uh, come up against each other. Um, Wilfred Bonney hasn't yet scored for Swansea since his return, I do believe. So again, when you're looking for that goal for your first goal at your club or anything like that, who's the side you want to play? West Ham. So fingers crossed that don't happen, you know. And as I said, we go on to get the, uh, go on to get the victory. Um, Starting 11 wise, again, another dilemma for Bilic. He's come out, said he wants to, he, he's thinking of the um, Carroll and Hernandez partnership, but he understands that, you know, playing the five at the back apart from the Tottenham game, you know, we've kept three clean sheets in three games, you know, the Huddersfield, uh, West Brom, and the League Cup game against um, Bolton. 
So, you know, that five at the back obviously is working. What does he do? Again, damned if he do, damned if he don't. Me, personally, Swansea will probably line up a 3-5-2, so you sort of want to match them. But I do think we need to go two up top. You know, we really, really do. Unless Antonio is fit enough to start, then maybe you can get out of it. So, going into it, if we look at the start in 11, if Billich continues with a five at the back, we'll probably go Hart, Zabaleta, Font, Reed, Abona, Creswell, Noble, uh, Cuyate, um, Antonio on the right, if he's fit enough, Hernandez up top and Anatovic, exactly the same way we lined up against Spurs. I would start Carroll's sub if he's going to go to one up front, just to go for the more pacier attack. Personally, I want to see the 4-4-2. So I'll go Joe Hart in goal, Zabaleta on the right, Reed or Bonner as the two centre halves. I know Font's been playing well, but I think Reed and Bonner complement each other better. Left back, Masuaku coming against Spurs played really well, but I'd stick with Criswell just for him defensively. The midfield, I'd have Antonio on the right, bearing it so as he's fit enough. Noble, Kyote, or Kiate, sorry, and Anatovic on the left, and then Carroll and Hernandez up top. I just want to see that form, that, that strike partnership. You know, as I said, Carroll's got a great record against Swansea. Chicharito pops up in them places. He'll play off of Carroll superbly, you know, and he likes being around in the middle. So having him out wide left, I think is a waste. So I think the first formation I've said is what probably Billich will go for. The second one is what I'd like to see. Leave the comments below. Let me know what you think. Do you think it's time that we started playing 4-4-2? Or do you think the fact that Swansea pack out their midfield, do we sort of need to have that five at the back? Or even go three at the back and five in the middle? You know, let me know what you think. Prediction-wise, I am going for West Ham win, confidence, 2-0 victory, 15-2 at Ladbrokes if you fancy it. And I do think Andy Carroll is going to get a goal against Swansea and continue his good record. Don't forget, check out all our other videos. Um, this should be up tonight which is Thursday night. Dan's video goes up on a Friday. We will be at the game, obviously. Fan cam straight after. Pop down to the... We're outside the West Ham store, to the side of the West Ham store. Pop down to see us. Don't forget to subscribe. Post-match pint will be going up uh, straight after the game on Saturday when we get back and film it. Only one thing left to say. Come on, you irons.